Would you like to hear a joke today? Why do cows have hooves? Because they lack toes. Man, how come Ridley Scott always has to do some weird pregnancy thing? Okay, so the finale of Raised by Wolves has just dropped on HBO Max, and you probably have a ton of questions. Throughout this video, we're going to be trying our best to answer everything, whilst also giving our theories on what exactly is going on. Obviously, there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the finale yet, then I highly recommend that you check out now. Please drop a thumbs up if you've been enjoying our coverage so far, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for breakdowns on all your favourite TV shows and movies. Without the way, this is the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, now let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so episode 10 picks up with Marcus waking up after being ousted from the Mithraic last week. Due to Lucius stuffing one of Mother's eyes into his mouth, his skin has been badly burned by the microwaves, and he very much stumbles across the planet looking for other signs of life. At one point, the character bumps into a vision of Hunter, who seemingly has a snake for his arm, and snakes become almost central to this entry. From the off, the show was very much laced with biblical references, and here they become far more prevalent. In the first episode, we theorised how mother and father were a metaphor for Adam and Eve, and we see that come full circle here with a snake leading them out of their quote-unquote Garden of Eden. Both were pretty much the first man and woman of this new paradise, and they wished to start a new civilization. but this snake destroyed that notion, and thus they are cast out of their home. Now though we never actually get it confirmed, I believe that snakes are really the ones that have been feeding visions to both mother and the humans. Marcus comes across a giant snake's skull head, and he hears rattling upon touching it. It was also inside the body of a snake's skeleton that he started to first receive visions, and at the end of the season, the snakes are probably the only ones that come out winning. Kepler-22b was pretty much chosen to house humanity because of its similarity to Earth, and it could be possible that the planet goes far beyond that in many ways. Had the dinosaurs not been wiped out by a meteorite, it is possible that reptiles would have remained as the dominant species on our planet, evolving over time to become some supreme snake overlords. Yes, I do watch Rick and Morty. Now, these snakes go far beyond the ones that exist on our planet, and they are clearly intelligent as they were able to seek out mother and place a baby within her so that it could grow. We also see that they have the ability to fly, and it is likely that they're far evolved beyond the ones that live on our planet. Now, if Kepler-22b did mirror Earth beyond this, then it also explains why there are humanoid life forms on the planet. Apes would have risen alongside the snakes this time, and they too would have reached a certain point. This is why Mother likely finds a skull of one, and why she and Father both remark on it being Neanderthal-like. They state that they've begun to devolve, but from a biological standpoint, there is actually no such thing as devolution. Everything evolves and grows, typically because of natural selection, and this could hint to how life was on the planet. If my theory is correct, then humanoid creatures evolved to a certain point in which they had complex brains, much like our own. However, the snakes were able to infect these with wild visions that slowly sent the inhabitants mad. Thus, the only ones that survived were the less intelligent of the species that were less susceptible to these visions. Slowly, these idiots, a bit harsh but, but that's what I'll call them, they became more and more prevalent, and the species seemed to devolve purely for their own survival. As the snakes no longer really had a food source because of this, they died out too, and this is why we've seen their great skeletons littering the planet. On top of this though, there is also the potential that humans have visited the planet before, and this is why Mother finds a helmet with a skull inside of it. I actually watched Prometheus yesterday in preparation for this finale, and I have to say that the engineer helmets look almost identical to this. There's even a scene where we have a severed helmet with a head inside it that I think massively echoes the iconography that we get here. Ridley Scott was of course tied to both projects, and though Fox own Aliens and Warner Brothers own this, I think he's purposely placing these little easter eggs so that fans can connect the dots. Even if that isn't the case though, there's still a lot that this could signify. Now, within the, the conspiracy theory, I don't, I don't know if that's the right term, but within the, the theoretical history community, there does exist a branch that believes there was a civilization that existed millennia ago, which advanced far beyond the technology that we even have today. There's several cave paintings that supposedly document this, and even in the Cathedral of Salamanca, there exists a carving of what appears to be an astronaut. 
This sculpture was actually added quite recently, but it has been used by many to theorize the idea of ancient astronauts. Now the show could be actually playing into this too, and perhaps a sect of humanity left Earth millennia ago and landed on Kepler 22b, which is where they created a settlement. They then fell victim to the snakes and started to devolve, but we do see the relics of their past, such as the pentagonal objects and so on. Again, I'm just theorizing all of this, but Scott has dabbled in the idea of ancient astronauts before, so he could once more be doing the same thing here. I don't wanna just do my usual summary of the episode as there's so much to talk about, but the basic plot of the entry is that mother, father, and the humans seek out a place in which mother can give birth. Father discovers that mother had sex with her creator Campion and he becomes jealous over this. Now I absolutely love how both mother and father over the season have slowly started to become more and more human and the actors behind the characters do an excellent job of nailing the complexities of human emotions creeping in whilst also portraying things in a very robotic way. Eventually mother gives birth and it's revealed to be a snake which has infected her. My jaw was literally on the floor over this reveal and I'd be surprised if anyone actually managed to predict this because it's so left field. I don't want to bring up Prometheus again too much but there's actually a scene in that where a snake like creature crawls into a character's mouth and this felt like the reverse of that almost playing with the chest burster motif from the Alien franchise. But when did this pregnancy actually happen? Well I believe that the snakes infected mother with visions and these led to her going to the hibernation pod which is where she plugged herself in. They tempted her with the idea of being reunited with the man that she loved and thus this further echoes the Garden of Eden metaphors with a snake tempting the first woman in order to gain something for itself. I believe the snakes also infected Paul with visions which furthered his indoctrination into the Mithraic religion and this is why he says he wants to give his pet mouse to the child. I'm sure you already know but white mice are used as a popular food source for snakes and watching this episode a second time, you pick up on just how creepy it is that he wants to give it to the baby. Now in a cave, he finds almost prophetic paintings which show a giant snake and two travelers in a ship. This comes to fruition at the end of the episode with mother, father and the snake flying through a tunnel to the other side of the planet. Hey, we did say last time these might be used to get from point to point and this episode definitely didn't diss a point. Crap puns as per. Now Paul also informs Sue that Sol has been telling him things and this involves taking the flight key from the lander. Through the snakes he also discovers that Sue is in fact Mary and that she and Marcus are not his true parents. This leads to Paul shooting her and I think it pretty much removes the possibility of him being the chosen one. The show has done a terrific job of keeping us guessing who the identity of the true one is and throughout these breakdowns we've jumped from Paul to Campion to Marcus to the unborn baby and more. However, the show seems to settle on Campion being the chosen one in the end, but who knows if that will even last beyond the next episode of season two, which yes, I'm very glad it's been renewed. Now mother actually kills the mysterious hooded figure because it attempts to attack her. In hindsight, we know that it was likely aware that she was carrying a snake, so it does make sense why it did this. We also get the reveal and were right with our theory last week that this would be one of the inhabitants of the planet but I'm still scratching my head over what's going on. He does look almost reptilian, so it is possible that they even evolved from the snakes themselves, but either way, Father says that they're ignorant to the planet's history, so he likely ties back to the power struggle on Kepler that we theorized over earlier. After the snake attaches itself to Mother, she and Father travel to the other side of the planet in order to try and kill it. They abandon the lander on the opposite side of Kepler, but the snake escapes and will likely become the apex predator now hunting the humans. It's terrifying seeing this beast burst out of the craft and it likely spells doom for the humans, especially because mother no longer has her eyes. What's worse than a giant snake? A giant snake that flies. Now to make matters worse, it now has a new food source and we follow Marcus as he discovers a group of atheists that have made it to the planet. It makes sense that they too would attempt to escape Earth and they now have an advantage over the Mithraic as they still have a ship that works. Now whilst this could set up a new war on Kepler, I actually disagree that this will be the case and I think that humanity will unite over this common enemy and try and take down the snakes. If 2020 has shown us anything, 
It's that humans can can all get on the same page about something when we need to. Um, it, it hasn't really. However, th this is a TV show, and I do believe that they will join forces for the next season with us getting a far more horrific series that will hopefully play a lot more into Scott's man vs. monster aesthetic. Campion has now been chosen as their leader, and he has a long road ahead of him that will involve not only trying to unite humanity, but also stop this new threat. I thought the finale was brilliant, and though I did find this season a bit hit and miss from time to time, purely down to its pacing, it sets so much up here that I'm extremely excited to see what happens next. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories, so make sure you comment below and let me know. There's going to be a ton of things to talk about, and I definitely want to see your input, so yeah, make sure you drop it in the comments, please. Now if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up, and make sure you check out our breakdown of the other episodes in the series, which are going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat us on our Discord server, linked in the description, or heavy spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Definition, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.